Okay, so yesterday we whizzed through a ton of stuff. Right? Let's review. From a VT graph, remember, we are graphing the velocities. And it's a different idea than graphing the displacements. You should be able to, for the test, I'm not going to say at the end of today you know how to do this stuff. That's your goal, but we're working towards that, right? But by test day, you got to be able to do this. Calculate average acceleration. Calculate displacement. Average velocity, instantaneous velocity, and instantaneous acceleration from a VT graph. Wouldn't it be nice if there was one master sheet that told you how to do everything? Yeah. It's coming up. It's in the package. Oh, it's so important that I actually hand it out to my grade 12s again. Oh, and I will show it to you. I see it. Do you see it? Okay. Let's just go through these. I'll do it once this way, and then I will show you on that summary sheet. Is this it? Nope. No. Nope. I'll show you, Nate. Don't worry. Find this page. Find the page that just says average acceleration on it. It's like page one. Okay? Page one. Get to page one. Okay. Average acceleration from a velocity time graph. How do you do it? In one word, you find the slope. Right? Average acceleration from a VT graph, you find the slope. Do you have to remember all this stuff? No. That's why you get a half page cheat sheet on every test. And you can do that. Every single test, mate. Full page on the exam. Full page on the exam. That's why I do it. I don't expect you to memorize it. I expect you to be able to use it. Lucas has a question. We're finding the slope of a line. We pick a point on the line or any two points. Oh, I pick two points. You must find two points so to find slope, right? You use start and the end. Yeah, most people pick the start and the end, but you don't have to. You can go that second one and end. Absolutely. Any one of those two. Okay, so average acceleration is found by finding slope. Okay, and then we did a bunch of those. We talked about when the object is stopped. When was the object stopped? No Never, because for the object to be stopped, the velocity has to be zero. zero. And it's only zero right there at the start, a very brief instant right there, and a very brief instant right at the end. I asked you, when is it moving backwards? When is it moving backwards? All the way from seven seconds all the way to 14. How do I know it's moving backwards? Because the velocity is negative. Mitch, this is, the, this is the time to listen. When is it moving forward? When the velocity is positive. Right here. When is it slowing down? It's slowing down when the velocity approaches zero, which is there and there, right? Approaching zero means slowing down. When is it speeding up? When the velocity is moving away from zero. Awesome. It's all right there. You can all look it up, right? Oh, when's it moving at a constant speed? When the velocity time graph is flat. Right? Constant speed. Different from the DT graph. How come? It's a different graph. Stop on a, on a DT graph is like flat. Stopped on a DT graph is flat, right? You are like velocity versus time. It would be flat, right? Because the velocity stopped. Oh, actually, sorry. Uh, stopped would be right at zero. It's going at a constant rate. This is constant rate when it's flat, right? So honestly, what is, what's, what's, what's the difference, like really? Like it's just what, no difference. It's just how the information is presented, right? Am I graphing it with displacement or am I graphing it with velocity? It's not very you can still get the same information. Different. It's like a different language, I guess, right? Same information, just presented differently. So the only difference is that the y-axis, really? Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, there's a conceptual difference. What you're actually graphing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now. Displacement. We spent considerable time on this yesterday. How do you find displacement from a VT graph? And in calculus, Nate, they call that, remember? Integration. Okay, okay. Integration. Okay. You want to remember that? When you see this funny looking sign in calculus, it kind of looks like a weird S or an F. That's integration. And then you go, oh, that's what it's been talking about. Mr. Schmidt? Mr. Bank. Oh. Where's me? I don't even see that sign. No, no, no. That's when you're taking calculus. Okay, good. Don't worry about that. I never want to see that sign. No, you probably don't. Okay, so we're finding area. Remember, it's the it's not always below the graph. It's the area between the graph and the 
The x axis, right? So when it's below, it's negative, and the shading area is simply above, right? What is that level? I can always tell because the next, this is, this is the way it looks. Let me show you what it looks like. It looks like this. And then the next, the next body language is this one. <laughs> That's how it looks. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? Are there ever confused people like this? No. That's what people, oh yeah, there's that one, yeah. Oh. There's also this one here, too. Okay, that one's an obvious one. Bro. They're all obvious. That's Trust me, I've seen them all. Like this. You're not fooling anyone. No, it's not. I'm just really <laughs> The worst thing a kid can do, and I see this, when I first started teaching, nobody used their calculator with their thumbs. Now everyone uses their thumbs on their calculator. That's a smart idea. I've yelled at many a kid for what I think was texting. Are you just calculating their phone with their Jeez. thumbs. Jeez. Did you get a white case for phone? Yeah, you do that. Okay, so displacement. <laughs> displacement is area. The big next one, third one was average velocity. One person, I think there's probably many more that tried it, one person that I remember, wanted to add up the velocities and divide by five. Why can't you do that? It was you. But I said it. Yeah. And but we fixed it up, right? Why can't you do that? It was different. Well, because that would mean you've got to divide by the time. That would mean that the weightings would be the same. For example, if I had three speeds, if I drove to St. Rose and I went through the eclipse at 80, and then I go through Oka River, and I think you go down to 70, right? Yep. And then I drove the rest of the way at 100. Is my average speed, add those three up, 100, that's uh, 250, and divide by 3, would that be my average speed? Yeah. No! Why not? Because I travel, how long did I travel at 80 for? What's it, 5 miles? How long did I travel at 70 for? Maybe a quarter of a mile? The majority of my time was spent at 100. You can't do it here. It's the same, it's different, right? You do that with a test because each one counts one third, one third, one third. But these don't count one third, one third, do they? It's sort of a trick question. Same idea here. Okay? The velocities are over equal time intervals. So how do you do it? You must find the displacements and then divide by the time. You must use V equals D over T. Using the displacements and then divide by the time. That's where you do the area thing, Nate, right? Okay, gotcha. Okay. You're going to have lots of time to practice today. The last two, you probably turned your brain off by this point yesterday, right? Okay, so let's just cover these a little quicker. Instantaneous velocity. Remember, it's a graph of velocity. How do I read instantaneous velocity? It's easy. Read it off the graph. Read it off the graph. It's a graph of velocity. Just read it. At six seconds, it would be right there. Two meters per second, right? It's a graph of velocities. This is the easiest one of the bunch. What about instantaneous acceleration? Remember, acceleration is the slope of the VT graph, right? So instantaneous acceleration really means instantaneous slope. And if you're talking instantaneous slope, you better hope that it's a straight line. Because if it's a straight line, it's easy zero. to calculate slope. Zero. Not always zero. Here it's zero. No, no, no. Flat. Straight line, Nate. The slope there. The slope there. No, they're not. Slope there, right? What if the... Velocity time graph is curved. You've got to do the tangent line. If it's curved, you must draw a tangent line. You just the way you touch the one point? Yes. And then two points to find the slope. Okay. As I was saying earlier, wouldn't it be wonderful if there was a summary on one single page or two pages that told you everything you needed to know about all these graphs? It's right there. And again, so important, I give it out to my grade 12s. Like Notice that there's a line down the middle. Do you have a line down the middle here? Good, because at one time I had to get kids to draw the line. The left-hand side is what kind of graphs? 
Displacement or position time graphs. Okay? The left-hand side is position time graphs. So if you have a position time graph and you're asked to find displacement, yeah, DT graph. If you have a position time graph and you're asked to find displacement, you simply read XF and XI off the graph and subtract. In other words, you do this kind of thing. Right? You take that point and that point, point A, point B, and you go B minus A. Remember doing that about a week and a half ago? Okay? You read the positions and you subtract. So yeah. find the initial A, find the final B by reading it off the graph and subtract it. If you have a position time graph and you're asked to find average velocity, velocity is the slope of the position time graph. And so average velocity would simply be the slope of the position time graph. If it's a straight line, if it's a curved line, and you should draw this picture. If it's a straight line, you're simply going to do this. Find the slope like that. But what if it's a curved line? Average velocity. What do you do? Average velocity. Connect the two endpoints. Why don't we do that? Average. We did it. Average velocity. I don't know the other one where you We're going to get to that just in a very brief moment here. If you have a position time graph and you're asked to find instantaneous velocity and it's a straight line. If it's a straight line and I want to know how fast it's going at that single point, we're asking for the slope at a single point. Can you find, can you use a single point, Lucas, for a slope? No, you need two points. two points. Could you use that point? You could use that, but you'd need another one. Those two, or those two, or whatever, right? Any two points on that line. The slope here is the same as the slope there is the same as the slope there, is it not? Yeah. Right? Any two points on the line are good. What if it's a curved line graph and you're asked to find instantaneous velocity? Tangent. There you go, tangent. You knew if you waited long enough, you'd get it right, right? Tangent. I know. How can it be a review? How do you start with a review? Well, like not the beginning of the year, but like... Wouldn't your review just be a view? Well said. I see. Next page. Still under the left-hand side. Notice that it says... Whoa. Notice that it says position time. Can you get average acceleration from a position time graph? Can't be done. It can be, but you can't do it like in one step. Can't be, done. Can't be done. What about instantaneous acceleration? Can't be done. I like it. Go back to the first page. Now let's talk about Velocity time graph. So these are the five things that I showed you yesterday. Why, why is this even on here if it can't be done? Because someone will ask. And then I'll say, well, it can't be done. Well, you should put that on there. No. Well, it might actually be done. It might. So if you have a velocity time graph and you're asked to find displacement, how do you do it? It's area. What if... It's not a single triangle. What if it's a whole bunch of shapes? Divide it into rectangles and triangles, and then just add them up, right? Above is positive. Below is negative. It's all right there. Eight, I'm almost done. Pay attention. How do I find average velocity from a velocity time graph? Use V bar equals D over T. How do you get D? C point A. Find the area. C, look at point A, point 1. How do you get D, displacement? Look up here. By area, right? How do you get instantaneous velocity? Read it directly off the graph. It is a graph of velocities. Isn't this a wonderful little sheet? It tells you how to do everything. I'm use it for every single time we do. I feel like this is a No, there's no sarcasm. 
He's like, throw me a beat. No. Right? No. This is what this is what students do is they summarize and they put it all on one sheet. This is what I want on your cheat sheet. If you come into this test without this on your cheat sheet, you're in trouble. If you have a velocity time graph and you're asked to find average acceleration and it's a straight line, you simply find the slope. If it's a curved line, what do you do? Don't say tangent. It's average acceleration, not tangent. What do you do? Connect the two points. Average. You're talking about average slope. Anytime there's average, you just connect those two points. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. What's the other one? Instantaneous. Instantaneous means tangent. Oh my goodness gracious. No. Actually, do you know what this is called? That when you connect two points like that? From geometry? Starts with a C. It's a chord. Yeah. It's called the chord. Okay, curved line, instantaneous acceleration, you're finding the tangent. Okay? Everything you need to know on two pages. Does that make sense? Give me a bobblehead. Does that summarize everything yes. together for you? You still need practice, you know, but at least are you feeling this is manageable? Good. Good. Okay. I, I'm going to talk about one more minute, then I'm going to be quiet. There are one, two, three, four, five graphs. Okay? More than enough. I made a few changes to them because there was something in there that really didn't need to be in there anymore. So I took that out. I made a few changes. I redid the answer key. You guys are the first group ever to see this answer key. Okay? What that means is there's a very good chance that so there's probably a couple mistakes that I made in there. Okay? I did mine in pencil. I've also got, I only did uh, the first two for you. And then I, I copied them because I thought we were going to get problems. I have the rest. I think I, don't, I think I won't have number five done yet. So I will get those to you or post them or something. If you find a mistake, please come and let me know because these have not been verified. So I'm. Yes. Let's just look at the exact, Let's just look at the very first one. Okay. So what does a bar mean? Average acceleration. A inst. Instantaneous acceleration. Delta x should really be delta d displacement. Yeah, I should fix this. Okay. What does v bar mean? Average velocity. V inst. Instantaneous velocity. Okay? How about you guys spend about maybe 12 minutes or so, maybe 15 minutes doing the first one, and then maybe I may go through the answers with you. Okay? So I'll give you 15 minutes and then we'll reconvene. Average acceleration. <laughs>